Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. For those who are new and first timers, welcome to the Jolly Marriage Show. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is B. And we're the authors of the book Make Love. Make Money. Make Money. Make a Life. Ten Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. We've been married for 38 years, almost 39 and have not had an argument in over 35 years. And uh, we got this book that is now becoming a bestseller. We figured it out with help. With help, that's right. And now we want to get it to more people, help more people when we started this show. I want to thank our son for encouraging us. Okay, that's first. want to say welcome to everybody. Second, we want to encourage you to go see our TED Talk. Everybody go see our TED so Talk. So where do you go see the TED Talk? At jollymarriage.com. Jollymarriage.com. It will help you. It's called How to Never Ever Argue Again in Marriage. 12 minutes long, but it's profound. Is it four steps? That's right. Four steps. Okay. All right. Go okay. ahead. That's All right. nice. And then, so we want you to go to go, go come to the Comeback Show. We want you to go to jollymarriage.com. And we want you to also, uh, in t- in t- on top of that, um, want you to go watch the TED Talk. All right? And, uh, hey, uh, uh, I want to give a shout out to Lou. Lou, thank you for the beautiful, you say it. <laughs> I said, no, thank right. you for the beautiful birthday parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dee's birthday was last week, mm-hmm. and we had a great birthday celebration. It was um, really nice and quiet. Well, Sunday night, we went out with your friend Gladys and Ron. They're mm-hmm. probably watching. Had love to, to Pemberton. They're in our book. The Pembertons are in our book. And he gave us even more stories. We're going to have to have okay. a second edition of the book because they gave some great stories. Stories are really everything yeah. because they actually show you how to do things. One story he said, though, mm-hmm. was so profound was that um, when they went to get their fur home, they, they, I think Gladys is watching. Uh, hey. uh, they, 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 they teamed up. Because uh, they had to team up because he said his finances were kind of jacked up at that point in his life. And Gladys took money for her 401k, for her retirement. And, as and a down payment. As a down payment. For, the, for their first home. And she took it out of retirement, which was and uh, they planned sac- on how to sac- sac- saying that. at that point because, you know, you never took But they did it as a team. They teamed up together. And now, 45 years later, they're still together doing great and children, grandchildren, and they are uh, just wonderful people. So what a great story. We got more stories from them. And then uh, Monday night, we went to dinner with your baby boy. Okay, Your baby boy took, took us out to dinner. Okay, He's now a lawyer. He make money. He takes us out to dinner. I <laughs> really appreciate it, son. <laughs> so anyway, thank God. Okay. Um, tonight. Tonight's topic is a very interesting topic. The topic is, is getting back with your ex a good idea? And is that an ex-girlfriend, boyfriend, ex-spouse? Ex-boy, so there's so all sorts options. of But it was brought to us because of this topic that is trending called Spun the Block. We said, I, I said, what? What? Spun the Block. So how, how are you spun Well, that? you're spinning the block. But they, rather than calling spinning the block, they say S P U N. You spun the block. You, so went, you around went around the, the block, block and came so back to where you started. You, you 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 went back to the person that you were with before. That's right. The girlfriend, the boyfriend, or, yep. the, or, or the spouse. That's right. That's right. And it's called spun the block. And it's so a, it's a topic S-P-U-N, that many of the, the young block. people are, are, are talking about. You spun the block. So uh, or are you? And and and, and, and I, would, I would say, or are you? Spinning the block. Well, that's how we would say it. Yeah, because uh, we old school. Yeah, yeah. But it's a topic that we need to talk about because uh, there are pos- positions, opinions on, on both sides. And we've had... It really is convoluted. Really uh, is well, convoluted. Uh, uh, our so, sister Cheryl said that she has spun the block a couple, a couple times. She said... But it. that was with boyfriends. Yeah, with a boyfriend. And then... Um, she mentioned that Judge Judy remarried her former husband, and they had been married. Uh, my friend Johnny Parker, who was here on the show not long ago, his parents divorced when he was a teenager. And, and he remarried And he re- them they remarried them later. many now, years later. I've got he became a minister. to say, though, however, that of the couples who remarry each other, only about 6% of them. Last as oh, say it again. 
okay, so when we're talking about spun the block, uh -huh. going back to, and in this case, former spouses, mm -hmm. that only 6% of them actually remarry and last. And that's not quite what your statistics show. Uh, uh, now, I, I read your statistics. First of all, you speed read. I read it though, but it said, it said, hold up, hold up, hold up. You, I think you're, you're taking a licenses with that, with that statement. That's not. You speed read. I, I, okay, so what did it say? It said that of the people who come back, about six of them get back together. But six percent. Six percent, but they stayed together more. You're saying they didn't. So we'll go through them in a minute. We'll okay. go through it in a minute. Okay. You see, we disagree. We disagree. We don't, you know what? That's why we disagree. We disagree a lot. There's but we don't argue. Of, we just have different, but we have respect. There's a lot of oh, oh, respect for each other. And therefore, we say, well, I don't quite agree with that, but I'm willing to listen to your side. Okay. Okay. And, that, and that's seen in action how we don't argue. Okay. We disagree on that, mm -hmm. but we don't argue about it. We just mm -hmm. respect each other's opinion. Uh, my friend Rodney Ellis, yesterday, yesterday. Let's That's your my bike God. partner. My bike so partner, your, Doc. Your, 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 our general physician. Yeah, and he said. Family physician. Marriage is two selfish people who have to work hard on getting rid of their selfishness. Mm -hmm. uh, I also like this one. Marriage is two imperfect people who are trying to perfect forgiveness. Hmm. That's that's profound. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, Simone Smith is here. We got Hi there. We got Landa Package joined us. Senior Terrence is in the house. How are you doing, Senior Terrence? All right, so back. On All top. right, going back to top. Okay, so See, interesting. The, oh, he had something he had to oh, say. Oh, oh, okay. Remember, yes, there they were in the rear. Then they reappeared. How are you going to persevere if you take them back? Keep both eyes open. Now the, let them go. <laughs> Terrence, I wasn't where I thought you were going with that, but I read it. Because Terrence is our biggest supporter of the book. He has probably helped us sell. He's a poet. He's a poet. He sold thousands of copies of his book by himself, telling people. And and, and then how uh, Linda and Greg Cazera have yeah. ordered lots and lots of copies and sent them to people. Holiday is coming up. That's Holiday. a whole other topic that you would we not need let to do. me, we do need to talk about address that. address right. in terms of the challenges of determining whose holiday party they Oh, yeah, I wouldn't let us do that. That's very important. I'll I, I tell you, let's do a poll right now. Poll, live poll. She wants to do a show on when. Well, the question has come up. This, 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 this well, couple, okay, is, okay, okay, this couple cool. is engaged. Okay, just give the friends and see what people say, yes or no. I say. They're arguing about where they should spend Thanksgiving and Christmas. The holidays. Not, right. Neither party wants to acquiesce or give in and go with the with the other party. Do y'all want to do a show on that? Because that's one of the things I that think, came out. I said, I think that's, a ma that's simply, baby. That's so baby. I think they should simply not get married. That's what I think. What happened when they already married? No, no, no. In this, this question was, oh, was if they they're were engaged and they're fighting already over where they should spend the holiday, <laughs> okay. and neither party wants to acquiesce. Acquiesce or give in or say, "Well, we can spend one holiday here." One holiday. No, I don't want to do that because my family only gets together once a year. Yada. I'm like, Ugh. they should not get married. You, you might be right on that. If they're not there. now, what if they are married? Then they got to work through that. That's why I say it's baby. It's so this is this is this okay, is communication. This is this is again two imperfect people perfecting unselfishness. That's selfishness. Yes, I would agree. Uh, I would agree. Uh, okay. okay, back to the time. I loved your parents. So whenever you said let's go, I just tell my mama, come, come on, go with us. We're going your to see. My mama was easy going. She was a sweetheart. She was, and we go there. She put up with you because yeah. you, you was sloppy and everything. Well, that's... And she allowed me to move into the attic <laughs> and do whatever you, I wanted to do with the house. <laughs> well, we would go down to the Taylors, her parents, and have all the holidays. We just, let's go. Get in the Cadillac. My, mom my mom had a big cook. old Cadillac. She liked his, that Cadillac. His mom didn't like to cook. So, you know, it all my worked out. In there. All worked out very well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, the topic is um, getting back with your ex. Is it a good idea? Okay, so that's the question. That's mm -hmm. the question. That question. And it was. Fun I want y'all's opinions on those who are watching live and those who are watching um, 
or on replay, you can send us an email. Is that a good idea? I think the answer is it depends. It depends. Right answer. Right answer. It depends on the people. Mm -hmm. It depends on the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So where, where did my information come from? First of all, some of the statistics were old. When I say old, they were older than June 1992. So I had to go to psychology today. And the most recent information after psychology today was um, the census. Oh, I got to say a question. Uh, uh, let's see. Land pack. It depends on the breakup. You're absolutely right. Uh, it, all you're right. Smart. Yes. You're smart. And Greg said, if they can't work that out now, they need to read your book. Okay. And know how to work things out before getting married. Amen. And, and Land pack says, sometimes it's worth another shot. But give us good, good. you it's got a very good statistics. She oh, got some oh, good I information. Do. I, I do gotta that. say, she got some good information. Go ahead. All, All right. right, from the Census Bureau and the most. But you gotta get through it. You can't be going. Oh, you can't I be dragging it on. Have to give the background right. information as well as doing if getting information from family law groups. Mm. Ah, and one that had a had had a lot of information and a big site was the Klein Law Group out of. Boca Raton, Florida. Okay. So I just want people, I can just grab this. So it's it's a collection of information. And then in 2023, this year, the trend is still complex in terms of what, what she said of depending upon how they broke up. Mm -hmm. What did they break up over? Yep. Finances, mm -hmm. family issues, mm -hmm. selfishness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So quick stat. Between they say now in 2023, between 30 and 50 percent of marriages break up. Wow. Between 30 and 50 percent. Now, as a result of that, then that means there are lots of opportunities for second marriages and sometimes third marriages. Okay. Now, 60 percent of second marriages end in divorce. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Of people not married the same people though. Correct. Correct. This, this is just general mm -hmm. uh, lay of land, mm -hmm. and that if if you marry a third time, the likelihood is that seventy per seventy three percent of the time you will get a divorce. Now you know why? So the more you, you know do, why? because it becomes easier. That's right. The it's next easy. time it's, it's easy. Why, it was hard the first time to walk yeah. away. Yeah. And every time you do it again, it's up. Oh, I'm out. Some people. So some the people, pattern is there. I, I, uh, one of my friends told him his wife, his mother, after the first one, she would do it in a heartbeat. I, I'm gone. Well, how many husbands? She had four. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Another thing to say is that now, with the advent of the no fault divorce, it becomes easier to get divorced because you two just kind of okay, we're going to do this, and you you might not have a lot of property and like in common. So it's easier to go ahead and get divorced. Speaking of yeah. that, can I say one put a put a pause in it? Sure. About what I told you when we got married. What did I tell you? I said, you I said, there's out of here. This you want to get out of this marriage? I got a, I got a simple out for you. Here's a simple out. I can die. Right you up. die, you good to go. You die, because I said death to us part. So okay. you die, you good to go. You good. Okay, you good. Hey, Other than that, we okay. in this All right. till we both die. Family therapist, W.J. DeHorty, a family therapist and a professor at the University of Minnesota said, most of us are now free to simply walk away from our marital commitments more easily with the no-fault divorce. Okay, keep going. We okay? got a lot to do. We, we no, no. All right. Let's why do they, go let's to, go to why? divorcees remarry each other? Why do you think? They do it for a number of reasons. They figured out their problems. Number one, that's right. They figured out what caused them to break up in the first place. So, so hold. Oh, you married for a reason, okay? People got married for a reason. Now, sometimes it's, it's jacked up reasons because they look good, they got money, boom, boom, bam, bam. You know, well, for those who don't know what that means, that's a woman who got everything stacked. Boom, boom, bam, bam. Okay. But it doesn't but, last for a lifetime. You know you can take it off when you go to bed. You can take the butt off. You can take the breast off. You know? <laughs> a lot of people do that. Okay. But but they got married for, for a reason other than friendship. We say chapter number one in the book, friends first. Boom. Like I, like I, I, I say to myself, you know, you can't be in the bed 24 seconds. No, you cannot. Sometimes you're going to have to talk to somebody. Somebody. You got a brain. Yep. 
Got a sprain, that's right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Why so, they marry each other? Remarry. Remarry each other. Okay, so now they've learned intimacy, how to actually well, what, well, friendship. For example, that's go back to Landa Pack. But why did they break up in the first pack? But she said it depends on the reason. If a lack of intimacy, mm -hmm. or financial hardship, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. they uh, um, they they were not needed more education, they were immature. Uh, uh, Terrence said that earlier. Uh, immaturity. If they mature, if they get some financial literacy, mm -hmm. and if they are able to develop some intimacy and care for caring, then it can change. Oh, so, or what so that maybe they weren't. They all that comes down to number one. They really weren't friends and perhaps did not share the same priorities. Maybe so. So wrong priorities. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say wrong priorities. Different priorities. It was just different. So maybe they said, you know what? I can and fix that. that is the, the and selfishness. Up. Going back to that selfishness, immaturity. I wanted my way mm -hmm. or else. Mm -hmm. Well, there mm -hmm. was the or else, but then they got out there and realized it's hard out there for a pimp. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Then substance abuse. We've had a couple people with that. Yeah, who had substance abuse issues, they left it because of substance or alcohol, but or whatever, I think that and the, they clean up, went to rehab, or whatever. But I think the financial challenges are more, or probably, if, if we were going to give them order, that financial challenges tend to come before the substance. So, I don't know, that's true. So that's you guessing, you're guessing, there's no data that says that you're thinking. Okay, yes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and sometimes to get back together for the kids. Well, that is that's a humble. That's a that's a that's a. Well, I'm I'm I just know those looking are the reasons. This is but I want you to get back because you like being the together. Percentage of okay, mm -hmm. but I like I want you to get back together because you like each other. I want you to get back together because there was something there, a spark. But you had to see. Here's why everybody needs a book. Let me say why the book, 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 book. Because most of the problems that break up marriage, we know they come down for three things. So here what we learned in our research for the book is sex, money, and communication. Boom. Sex, money, communication. One of those three are usually the key to uh, cause of the but breakup. But communication is really first. Yes. Yes. Because if you're not talking, sharing what is really important to you and listening. That's right. And I think listening. That's what we want to hear the TED Talk where we talk about listening. Now. It's more important than the talking. Yes, and yes. you know what? I was reading this. I was reading this article. I don't know. I'm like reading three books at one time. This particular Four. book. Thank you, dear. But then you give me a book to read. Here, read another one. To review another one. before For you my do XM your show. XM show. So this book talked about loud listening. I thought, oh. so we're gonna that, that we're gonna use one of see it made you frown right? Loud listening. I don't understand. And it. we're gonna use that. For one of the the concepts when when we teach the one of the classes next year on on communicating mm. customer service, so loud listening made you frown. So loud listening is when what we call the forward lean, what we call the frown, what we call the hmm. It's called loud listening when your body language and your communication, other than just showing no emotion, lets your partner know. That you're focused on them. Loud listening. I don't I like that at all. Cool. I, don't I don't like it, it at all. I don't like it at all. <laughs> I don't like it at all. You know like why? Loud listening. You know I why? Do. Let me tell because you why. It's a visual. The, listen, you see when you do this. That means people don't understand. When they when they eyebrow, when you, listen, when you listen, listen, that, listen. I got your attention. Yeah, but listen, when they do this. They don't understand. Their brain is trying to process. What? What? I don't understand. Now, versus, versus, versus. When your eyebrows go up, that means, oh, I get it. I like it. I don't want everybody, when I grew up, that's how I will get my, my book titles. I go to people and I ask, what do you think about this? And they go, oh, no, I don't want that book. I throw that title But, then, but if they the, do this, the, 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 the then I say, oh, I got one now. I got a good one. Makes you, you're, the, you're questioning. No, no, no. You I don't understand. The visual you know, you the loud listening. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> Who's the teacher in the group? <laughs> Don't go there. I'm not going there. All right, look, I got to say something. I got a point to say. I, I got a point to say because you were talking about the fact that 
the, the, the children and the families getting back together. We want you to have a relationship where the children are going to leave one, one way or the other one day. I don't care what. They're leaving. And if you don't and have a relationship. they already know that you guys are not happy with each other. So we want you, you to work on your friendship or your yourself. relationship so that it's not the kids that are keeping you together. It's you and your love for each other that are keeping you together. And you really, you gotta really love each other. I mean, really love each other. And that's something to work on. Now, here's what else I was gonna say. The other thing is that most marriages break up because some little problem, it's a little stress factor. Might have been intimacy, might have been a uh, communication, might have been financing, might have been uh substance abuse, some little or some issue. But if you don't talk about but it, but if you don't fix it and you don't have a system to fix it while it's little, that you're gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes a chasm that's so big it's hard to get through. Can you, can you think of another word that makes you word chasm? No, that's the right what word. Is that? That's the correct word. What is it? What does it mean? That means a large area of space between oh. two air two land oh, you're masses. So erudite. I'm erudite scholarless. <laughs> erudite scholar. I have a doctorate. I have a doctorate degree. Okay. Okay. Talking yeah. plain English, so even those of us who don't have PhDs can understand you. Okay. If the words are so big and nobody understands what you're talking about, then you have not gotten your point across really jolly. There you go. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. What is this lack of suitable partners? That's why they get back together. Because it's hard out here. It's hard out here. That's why. Uh, let's see. Um, and now Terrence went back to the money. He went back to the money. He said, I'm listening to a woman who got money, T-bills, money markets, CDs. I'll come back to her. And I'll run back to her. I'll go around the block two, three times. <laughs> Terrence! We ought to cut it out. All right. Education. This is important. And race. These are very important. Oh, yeah. Well, no, th this is just additional research. Yeah, but it was good. From tw uh, Oh, you read it. I've read everything. Mm -hmm. Well, you say I skim, but I read you fast. Do, you skim. It says that the share of people who married only once has decreased since the 1960s. Mm. I think that's a cultural thing, too. The share of people uh -huh. has decreased. The number so the total from 50 share of people. So fewer people are getting married, but later on in it also talks about that People who wait to get married when they're older tend to divorce less. Well, I want you to get on the education and race. Well, those are very why? important. Because they're very wait, important. wait. They tend to divorce less because they're more mature. They're mature. Yeah. They they thought through. They've been out there for a while, mm -hmm. and they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also the other side of that. There's some people are stuck in their ways the older they get. So nobody wants them. No, not that. <laughs> no, no, that's what nobody wants them is that they want their way. Okay. I'm used to doing. It. I want so, the toilet so, paper going this way. Now you may so want to go the no other way. So willingness to come. I think about our friends Noble Davis and Cynthia Harris. They got married old, older. Uh, some of y'all might know them, and they are just like, just incredible uh, lovebirds. Every time I see them, they're so much in love, and they were older, and they were realizing how grateful they were to have each other. That's right. Okay, so you want to go to the education bit? Yeah. Okay. So people with higher academic levels tend to have only one marriage. They, they, they get married, tend, tend to be more likely. That's just what it is. I thought that was interesting. So we can explain it by the fact that this social group delays their wedding in the first place. So, so they are simply And they're older, more mature. And they're more mature. And they're stable. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. they get divorced less. That's what a race. They divorced less. Okay, okay right. race. Bottom line with race is that Asians have fewer divorces. Yep. Asians. So Fo I won't get into why. Followed by Indians, East Indian, because many of them, uh, we know friends who are East Indian, we have dear friends. Who well, theirs is cultural, cultural in the sense that they still select. They select or mate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. My son said, please don't select mate for me. Okay. Because he said, I want to select my own. I, I, who said we were going to select? He wouldn't pay attention to it anyway. No. But we would, we would, we we a helicopter parents, so we tend. To. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed being a helicopter parent. I hope he has enjoyed having a, a parents who are helicopter. Parents. We are helicopter parents. We we well, that's we, a good, we, a we good hover, thing. we hover, and we we check on them, and we yeah. talk to him, and we communicate, and we are friends. Yeah. We are really good yeah, friends. Yeah, does he always take our advice? No. no. But we say, look. But he's more always, apt to take yeah, our advice. He is now, more apt now. to take. But I'm like, look. 
if, if you want to ask any question, because we probably made every mistake every financial mistake ever thought about making. Every financial mistake we'd have made it. Woo we've had the lease cars, we've had sub lease cars. Mm. Oh my god. We, we, just whatever it is. We paid for a Volvo three, two, three times with the interest rate. All right, let's not go. Let's pay not for go. seven years to pay for a car. You know that was stupid. But that's that. That's that. Yeah, we were stupid to do it, though. We could have paid for a road to check and be done with it. We didn't we know no better. We could have bought a used car. We, we could have bought so, a used so, car. So our position to our son is, you can ask us anything. We will tell you the truth because it's easier to tell you the truth than to remember the lie. What did I say last time? Whatever the mistake is, we've probably done that. And you can just learn from what he listens he listens that he listens mm -hmm. okay how strong are reunited couples that's an interesting that's question. what i wanted to get oh, to oh okay so the national center for health statistics says that about 28 to 33 percent of remarriages in the divorce compared to 40 percent of first marriages huh and that was really a statistic as old it was from 1992. And the reason that they the newly restored relationship depend on the reason for the breakup and whether they were fixed. So for example, it's a cycle what Landa Pat said, mm -hmm. okay, the spouses broke up due to domestic violence, guilty spouses returned to old habits, second divorce is inevitable. To ensure the success of a marriage, spouses need uh, to do the create time for each other. That's very important. Then they need to be open to communicate. Very important. See, I would put open to communication first. First. Right. Learn to take responsibility, okay? For your behavior. Stay optimistic. Communicate. And then friends first. Now, my 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 my, my biking partner and I was riding and talking about his 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 wife. And he said, you know what? When I met her, we were best friends from day one. And I think they've been married 40 some years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, it, it were both their second marriage. And he said, Man, just we're the best of friends. You know, uh, they had a practice together because yeah. She was a, is a gynecologist who just retired. She was my gynecologist. Too. Right. So, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. friends first. I can't dwell on that enough. So, look, 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 look folks, folks. Look here. I'm going to go through this real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Friends first. Make God an equal part of your marriage. Decide to make it last. Boom. That's it. You got to decide. Decision is the key. No great results happen without decision and consistency. You decide. This is it. I told her when she, I told y'all what she, she got to die to get out of this. I, we made a decision. This is for you. You know, you are, you have less money when you're divorced because you got to buy everything in there. That's left there. Right. William's sending us a text now about yeah. next week's show. He mm -hmm. got a topic. He gives us some good <laughs> topics sometimes. Things. The, and last week, that what we did with the cheesecake was was partly his. We got the original from Cheryl because it was so viral, but then he sent the other one. Our time is up. Look at that time, Lord have mercy. Okay, 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 look here. Let's see. Our friends in India and Pakistan, hold on, as they say, uh, all have arranged marriages. Divorce is unheard of. I assume that is cultural. We were surprised our friends said love came later in the marriage. Amen. They, they say it like this. They and got we to know each other. They got to know. We, and, and on uh, in America and on the a uh, 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 Western society, you get you start off hot, and over time you cool off. And they said in Eastern marriages, you start off cool, and over time you warm up. Mm, that's so good. Hey, look, our time is up. Our so time is up. Was that good? Did y'all like this one? To know each other. All right. Now, uh, let me ask you like this: uh, Do y'all want to talk about this thing that she asked about? Y'all gotta give me some some feedback real quick in that's the chat. Whether we want to do a show on. Uh, people who are uh, uh, upset about where they're going to spend, spend the holidays. And do y'all want me to do a show on that or not? Yeah, just say, nah, like I did. Nah. That is, come on, somebody. I'm not, uh, Terrence, give me what you think. Greg, no, we don't need to do that. We need to do more important stuff. The holidays hey. are coming. Yeah, the holidays are coming, but uh, that's baby stuff. Okay. You can figure that stuff out by just talking and being, so, so, and so not being not so going... selfish. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with you this time. Can you go with me next time? Let's just work it out. You can't compromise well, on a little thing. That's not a problem for us. I know, but I'm saying that's what they need to do. They need to follow our lead. They need to not get married. <laughs> what do y'all think? They already have a challenge. Uh, Jerome said, yeah, do a show on that. Okay, Terrence, uh, what do you say, Terrence? Come on, give me some. Greg, and, uh, them, give me some. All right, look. Come back show. If you're in the D.C. area, come join us this Saturday night. 
Go to thecomebackshow.com. Get your tickets right now. It's a small venue, beautiful venue. I'm going to be speaking, singing, performing, entertaining. And someone said, here's what it is. It's like a concert mixed with a comedy show, mixed with a motivational seminar, mixed with a church service. Come on, somebody. We are inspire you. We're going to make you laugh, but we're going to inspire you to live your best dreams. Okay, come to the comeback show. Two more Saturdays. That's all we got. And then we are. All right, next. Um, Until 2024. Yeah, that correct? 2024, but the, for the rest of the year. Okay, next is we want you to go to the uh, my website, the Jolly Marriage, A Jolly Marriage or Jolly Marriage, and watch the TED Talk and tell every couple you know, go watch TED Talk, how to never, ever argue getting married. Could that save a lot of this stuff that they're arguing about? Honey, you're over. Okay, and then third. What's the third thing? The third thing was, okay, you got the TED Talk, you got the comeback show, and what was the third thing we talked about? Nothing else to talk about. Whatever you were going to say. Uh, I, was gonna... I was going to say we're in the fourth quarter, uh -oh. and now is the time. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. She's getting ready to go down the check... rabbit hole. Go if you are still working, now is the time to check your 401k and make sure you have maxed out for the year. So maybe your income is so high that you need to reduce your tax bite. So you can save up to 22500 of your salary in your 401k, which means it reduces your total taxable income, which will save you money. Terrence said, awesome show tonight. Then, thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Terrence. Then you can max out after taxes your Roth. And a lot of people, young people, don't have Roths. A Roth is you can save up to, what, $6,000. Um, you're working, but you can save up to $6,000, and they won't take any taxes out. Okay? So you can, and next year is going to go to $7,000, and your 401k total will go to $23,000. Why? Because the federal government realizes people are not saving enough money. It is becoming a problem. There are more people retiring than there are people in the workforce paying into the systems. So they're trying to get people who are working to save more of their money so that they won't depend on the government because the government might not have enough money to pay all these retirees. That's all I got. All right. So I know the third thing. I'm going with this week to speak at High Point University. I'm honored to be an artist of residence at High Point, joining Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, uh, Mark Reed, the co-founder. And I get to be eye candy. Netflix. Um, <laughs> we're going to be, uh, who else? Uh, John Maxwell. Um, uh, there, there are a number of luminaries. I'm honored to be one of the artists of residence. And so I'm on my way there to, to High Point, North Carolina. Uh, tomorrow to speak uh, this, this week. Okay, let's see. Greg, ha holidays aren't a problem we have ever had. We talk and co compromise. See, maybe you will help younger couples. It's really the communication mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Great show tonight. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Hope you all have a great week. Come to see this comeback show. I'll see you all this weekend. I'll sign your book, take a picture, and kiss some babies. All right, let's go on out on our music from my jazz album, which I sing at the comeback show, Close to You. Here we go. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.